This game, Valheim, blew my expectations out of the water. It's a third person Viking action adventure survival game in a procedurally generated world. If you were to take the best aspects of Skyrim, Minecraft, maybe kind of the graphics of RuneScape, but then put like ray tracing lighting on them. And then if you were to add sailing and adventure aspects of Legend of Zelda Wind Waker and mash that all together, make it also multiplayer co-op. It, it, it's a gaming miracle. When you start your adventure, you're really just this little caveman, cave women and, and men. You were just brought in by a giant uh. lightning bird. You start in around a bunch of sacrificial looking stones and you're actually trying to hunt down these like old Nordic gods. You know, your instincts kind of kick in as a gamer. As a gamer boy. <laughs> you know, all right, let's uh, gather some wood. Destroying these branches. You pick up a piece of wood and then all of a sudden, Boom, the recipe is there. Instead of Minecraft, back in the day you had to just like guess how to make stuff. Genius idea. You just get the recipe in your, your little crafting table and you can make it right away. You grab a piece of wood, you now know how to make a workbench. You grab a stone, you now know how to make like a stone ax. And that stone ax you can use to cut down trees. Which hey, by the way, cutting trees down has physics in it. This little game made in Unity has full on physics. You can watch your friend get crushed by a tree. Gosh, this thing fell on me again. Or one of the goblins that, that are randomly on the island and you're like super terrified of them at first, but then you realize you're like eight times as strong as them just by using your fists and you can freaking tear them to pieces and take their sapling energy and, and use it to your advantage. <laughs> or make torches out of it. But everything is really simple when it comes to crafting. It's very seamless, and I think the game does a really good job at focusing on letting you play the game rather than sitting in menus and trying to figure out how to create your own recipe book and publish it online and try to outsell Chrissy Teigen's cooking books. You also have a bird, a crow, named Hugin, or Hugin, or Hugh in Either way, Hugin is this back. fantastic little bird that appears every time you do something kind of new and noteworthy. He gives you these little tips about, hey, eat snacks to increase your health. Ew, or warrior. you just discovered a new ingredient. This is a thing you should build to create better gear. Or maybe you can use build a raft and sail away to a new land. But it's funny, I've, I even forgot his name for a second because I haven't seen Hugin in forever. I've played hundreds of hours of this game already. Man, I gotta stop saying how long I play video games for. There's a lot of interesting parts about the way the game kind of charms you too. It has skills that develop similar to the way they do in Oblivion. Ha! So if you notice that you like jump a lot, your little head will glow yellow for a second and your skill will level up. Ah! If you want to get your unarmed skill, go punch a tree for four hours, like a lot of my friends did when they're waiting for me to figure out how to pour forward the server. It's kind of cool too because you and your friends can diversify who's good at what skill. Like if somebody's really good with the bow and somebody's really good with blocking and shielding and using swords, you can kind of pick these roles to help you in fights later on. But it feels really good to build these skills. Me and about eight other friends bought this game. And then something really interesting happened was there was eight gamers in there, including me, kind of from different backgrounds of gaming uh, tribes you know first person shooters third person shooters puzzle makers and whatnot there was no puzzle makers in there but there was a lot of differing opinions about the games they love the most and everybody jumped on the Valheim train the way that people jumped on the Skyrim train everybody loves it it's there's something very special about that when I first started playing Valheim it was a lot like the experience I had when I played Skyrim in 2011 for the first time Good morning earth I remember playing it and being like oh I could live in this world for a while 
Many of you, like me, when they got Skyrim and they took five days off of work, and by that I mean took five days off of Moe's Southwest Grill because I was 16, which isn't saying much and I pretty much had all the free time in the world. I didn't do anything in my life in that first week besides play Skyrim. And a similar situation happened a few years later, at least I think it was a few years, was when Minecraft came out, or at least when I discovered it. Instead of Skyrim having limitations in the world, Minecraft, you can go forever in so many different directions. And in Valheim, although you are limited in the 10th world, you can create multiple worlds in the game. And the world of Valheim is, I mean, it's so f***ing big. By the way, if you guys hit M and like zoom all the way out, we're on like 1 24th of the planet. What on earth? Yeah. This Wait, map what? is humongous. Also, I'd like to quickly rant on why why Bethesda? I would appreciate if co-op was in your guys' amazing games like Fallout 3 and and Skyrim and, and not making it illegal to do so if you wanted to mod it. I'm pretty sure I donate to the Patreon that made Skyrim together and I've never even done it before. I don't get why you couldn't make a co-op game out of Skyrim. Instead, they decided to make a really cool co-op game called Fallout 76, which was actually not a co-op game. It was a giant MMO instead, which is what everybody wanted, was to have, I don't know, 85 players in a Skyrim world, which does sound kind of cool, except for the fact that the game has no story. People were douchebags online, and oh yeah, it's filled with so many bugs and glitches that it would make Cyberpunk 2077 blush. Anyway, another huge part of the game is creating your own village in your homes. Valheim has a very in-depth building system where you can build walls at certain angles and connect roofs and there's even a whole weight distribution system in the game that allows you to only build what's realistic. But every action in the game feels just tactile and you're connecting with the wood, you're attacking enemies and the, the sound design along with it, it's like you're punching, you're shooting a deer and it's slamming into its body and also exploding for some reason, <laughs> but it's a similar way to when things die in Zelda Wind Waker. It's got this cool little effect. You can pick up the things that you got from killing it. <laughs> yeah, I love killing things and taking their organs and making sausages out of them. Um, yeah. Yeah, I really gotta get out of the house. Valheim is a survival game. Personally, I usually don't vibe with survival games. I've played a lot, but a lot of the times their ideas end up coming out way too um, dull. They're overly complex, they're not confident enough in their idea or where their idea is ending up, or they're just fucking boring, man. And Valheim is the opposite of those. It's somehow this early access, and it just came out, it's the first early access update, and it feels so oddly polished and smooth and amazing, and um, <laughs> I just start crying. <laughs> it's got the survival aspects that are not clunky and in your face and constantly bothering you. They're pretty simple to live by. They're not um, so punishing that it makes the game really rough and unenjoyable to play. It's, it's all kind of background things like increasing your max health. You can't die from starvation, for example, but you can get down to a amount of health that you can pretty much get one shot at. And I switched that to my crouch. <gasps> The game also has a lengthy night and daytime cycle and during the day you do feel safe. You can run around in the, in the, in the grass and you can shoot your bow and you can shoot a seagull and build your house with your friends and push each other into the bushes. And then the night comes and the, the music starts to shift and turn. It was so dark, what the heck? Jeez, it's getting dark. Which the music is really great and it's just a great overall setting. I don't, it's, it's not like you know, the most mind-blowing soundtrack, but it is very, very nice and well-fitting to each setting that it plays a different uh, tone. You know, the night comes and things, eyes are shifting the trees. You hear strange sounds that aren't the deer. And God, why does the deer sound like that? Um, but you know, you start hearing things like and like these, these creatures that you're like, oh shoot, that's not what I normally hear. And then you get killed by that thing. <laughs> because you don't know what those things are capable of. The game just naturally kind of nudges you to go and discover the potential of the world that Valheim has to offer. And it does it in pretty subtle ways. Like once you kind of get a home set up and a settlement, you can get you and your, your Viking village gets together and you guys end up saying, hey, how about we got that thing? 
then uh, that marker on the map for the, for the, I forgot the freaking deer's name. It's like Elihuen. We can go hunt this thing. It's, a, it's an old god. Odin himself tasked you with murdering this ancient beast. You guys are like, yeah. Grabbing a beer. <laughs> Oh, no. oh my god, the tears, Jack. Holy shit! Thank you. Oh, oh my, my god. god! I haven't been hit yet, but I'm scared as shit. Use all your energy and then go for a brisk walk out of the danger zone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going in hot! Look at him! I'm never mind. Boys. Last shot! Look at this guy. Killed it. I'm coming. Oh, he's I'm sad. Coming. And you get a thing from it and uh, like a horn and you can use that horn to build a pickaxe And then that means you can go get copper and iron now because you've seen those deposits in the black forest And the black forest is over there and you're really scared of it because you've seen things and heard things that are really creepy You don't know yet. There's so much mystery. There's so much charm. <sighs> I don't Yeah is, is anybody hearing this? You know, the first bunch of hours of the game can be completed on the first island alone. He's still coming after me, dude. But these things that were difficult to you in the beginning will kind of start to become commonplace, like hunting deer. It's like, okay, they run this way and they zigzag and then you kind of shoot them. Actually, that's still really hard to do, but things become easier tasks and you kind of start to really oh, damn it. bring your whole village together and you share supplies or maybe if you're just alone, you just are alone and you figure it out for yourself, I guess, nerd. You'll start to take risks more and more as an adventurer and a Viking um, of the old world or a Valkyrie of the old world. This is oh. so badass. <laughs> You'll notice that you start off in a place called the Meadows. Uh, I think that's for every game you start off in the Meadows. I don't know, the freaking whole map is randomly generated and it's the coolest thing in the world. It's a biome that's kind of peaceful. It has so. deers and little necks running around and they kind of, you know, they play games with you and they, they nibble at your legs and you oh. stab them in the face. It's a really, you know, kind of an easy level. And then, you know, if you travel a little bit more south or north or wherever direction it is, you kind of notice that the forest eventually kind of becomes these thicker trees that, that are darker and some blue particles start to float around and you're like, where am I? I don't even know. Like, you I eat those mushrooms over there and I'm kind of having a psychedelic experience. Most likely. And this new area that you find yourself in is known as the Black Forest. It can start to get a little dangerous. The gray lings are now gray dwarfs. You're running into adult versions of the enemies you were killing in the beginning, and you realize, oh, th those guys I can actually kill and I can fight them. It's just this cool, risky environment that you're in because if you die, you drop all your stuff and a headstone is placed to your body and you lose a bunch of your skill levels. And the most punishing aspect of dying in Valheim is having to go and retrieve your body. I mean, yes, you can be very close at times and it's no problem, but if you die oceans away, hours of adventures in, you will have to pay the price if you die out there of traveling all the way back to get your gear. But you know, sometimes you're in the forest and you see something a little larger than usual and you start to think, Wait, is that something that's that big or is that just a gray dwarf that's really close and I can't even tell? And all of a sudden you hear the ground tremble and shake underneath your feet. There's f***ing trolls in this game. Valheim really capitalizes so well on the, the journey of your game. I haven't even talked about sailing yet and going to different islands and, and, and different biomes and these adventures that you'll go on with your friends. And I, I can't even tell you what kind of adventures you'll go on with your friends because everything's procedurally generated. I love how two of us have just the most like Viking names in the world and there's just three of us are Greg. <laughs> <laughs> the environment in the game is just so magical and, and frankly beautiful. Like I could, like I've actually legitimately, there's a lot of mornings I've woken up, especially on like the weekends when I can like play Valheim in the morning and I'll just like sip coffee and, and just like sit in front of my lake house in Valheim. God, I sound like such a loser. <laughs> but on a Saturday morning, after I've raged all night on a Friday night, I'll play Valheim in the morning and it's just so peaceful and I hear the ocean crashing against the waves, which I couldn't do in real life because I live in Florida. But no, it's better in a video game. <laughs>
Oh man, part of this is tears. And there's even times where it's it's funny. I'll, I'll be like watching a sunset in the morning. All of a sudden I'll like turn to my right and there's like just a troll there like watching the sunset too and he hasn't seen me yet. And it's almost like he appreciates it as much as me. And I realize we're all connected in this world of Valheim, this 10th world. And you know, I did eat some of those mushrooms earlier actually, now that I think about it. The game is just so confident in its art style that it does pull off these interesting biomes that really set a tone. Like you're in Lord of the Rings and freaking Frodo's over there being like tangled in webs and he's like, looks like he just threw up. Next thing you know, you're just in like a, in the middle of a blizzard and you're freezing your balls off. So much of the weather is so dynamic in the game. You could be sailing on the seas and watching the, the sunset and the sparkles across the water or like running across the coastline and seeing the reflection of a mountain on the water and it's, I feel like I'm describing like what Forrest Gump saw on his adventures when he has to explain them to Jenny at the end of the movie. Sometimes it would stop raining long enough for the stars to come out. And then it was nice. It was like just before the sun goes to bed down on the bayou. Those old million sparkles on the water. Like that mountain lake that was so clear, Jenny. It looked like there were two skies, one on top of the other. And then in the desert, when the sun comes up, I couldn't tell where heaven stopped and the earth Again, it was so beautiful. I wish I could have been there with you. You were. The game is centered around Vikings, you know, and it's it's pretty smart to live on a coastline because Vikings like water. Um, you know, Vikings are known for sailing and going on adventures from one island to the next, you know, European-wise. <laughs> History, I know it. But that's what you do in the game, is once you've kind of capped out on like, okay, I have iron and tin, and now I have bronze, but I know that there's more than just bronze in the game, where do I, where do I find that? Where do you find that? Well, I haven't searched the coastline that I've been staring at for 70 hours of gameplay, because that's how long it takes to actually build a raft that's not just a raft. Um, but actually, it's funny, because, you know, at first, you do want to see how close other islands are or anything like that, so you do build a raft and it's literally like the movie Castaway where you're just like, you're building this thing out of parts of a porta potty and it's pretty brutal going on the seas with your first raft, especially when you're going like a quarter of a mile an hour and the wind, I don't know if anybody else has experienced this in Valheim, but I think all of my friends and I have, the wind is always against you. The Stay wind's the not necessarily with us, unfortunately. When you're in your raft days, dude, I mean, you'll enjoy the journey of being on a raft, sailing to save your friend who died on another island, but accidentally slept there, and you have to go and save him, and it takes an hour and a half of your Friday night, and you go and do that, and you save him, and you pick him up, and it takes another hour for you to come all the way back, because you finally have the wind going against you, but it's only like two miles an hour, because you're still on a crappy raft with holes in the freaking sail. And you get all the way back home, and then you have to go to sleep, because you're so damn tired and drunk. Um, not drunk, but you're, you're drunk. But it's an adventure. A lot of the time it seems like games are kind of dependent on where you, the player, are in the world. For instance, I used to play Red Dead Redemption all online all the time. I like to hunt in that game. You have to go to tall trees to hunt, like bears and deers and cougars and stuff like that. And once you got there, it was kind of like empty. And it didn't seem like any animals were there. And it's because there legitimately wasn't animals there. To offload some of the memory in the game, it doesn't spawn bear in tall trees when you're in freaking Blackwater. Well, maybe Blackwater, because you're kind of close. But in Valheim, I don't know how they do it, but it seems like the world is living whether you are there or not. And even if you are anywhere near it, uh, especially because the game, slight, very slight spoiler alert, has teleporting in it. Sorry, I said that quickly because I didn't want you to click off the video when I said slight spoiler alert. Don't leave. The game has portals though, and you could teleport across the entire map and there's still Greylings fighting <laughs> trolls and, and skeletons fighting Draugr and and all this crap just like colliding into itself and fighting and the game just gives you so much freedom. A lot like the way The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild gives you freedom. It doesn't tell you, hey, you're on this quest, go collect 10 deer hides and then you can create leather armor to go face this boss that this guy will tell you to, to go to and, and you go to that thing. No, 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 no. It's your decision. You do what you want to do. 
You wanna drink Skull with your boys? So real quick, I don't know why, but I keep calling Mead Skull. Uh, I don't know where this word came from. I don't know why I'm saying it. Just ignore it and move on. All right, thanks. <laughs> Coors Light. When the bottle's blue, it's as cold as the Rockies. Coors, the banquet beer. Except it's not. This is, this is pretty lukewarm, I guess. But it gives you this freedom that you don't need a quest giver or anything like that. You found a freaking rock with a sign on it and you know exactly where to go. And you go to that thing and it reap the benefit, the rewards from taking the risk. You could be sailing, trying to find another uh, place to go gain more loot, and you end up finding out there's like crypts and caverns that you can go into and, and find ancient treasure and or find these like old stoic villages and, and towers that you can get loot from. You know, sometimes you see an ancient ch chamber that you can go into, and it's like, what's gonna be in there? Or is it just gonna be like a, a basic cave, or is a giant troll gonna be waiting there? Oh my. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, that's the biggest thing I've seen in my life. Holy shit! Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a... <laughs> Crisis averted. Uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, once you sail to these, these new lands that have all these treasures and whatnot, there could be like... 20 skeletons just like waiting on the shoreline like the freaking White Walkers in Game of Thrones. And it makes you feel like a total badass, especially when, you know, skeletons used to be the scariest thing in the world to me. But then once you figure out like, oh, they have a weakness and like, you know, I'm also strong now and I have enough health to take on like a punch. You know, you can, you can block them with the shields and figure out how to parry it. You can like stab them. Oof. That was a lot. And they explode and you get their bone scraps and you go make a dope freaking deer cloak. You really do think, it's a big circle of a world on the world map. Part of you immediately says, what's on the edge of the world? Um, Cause it's obviously flat, but in the game I think it is. I don't, <laughs> I don't really know yet, but cause I haven't been to the edge of the world. But I know that you can go to the edge of the world. The world ends. Everybody knows that, you'd fall right off of it. And there's also like really interesting things. You look up into the sky and you'll see a giant tree that has these cracks and green mystical elements going through it and it's like where does that end or where can i go can i climb to that if i wanted to like why am i talking what is this my lips make a movement and a sound and you know what i mean blows my mind sometimes you'll be going through a giant storm in the sea and, and your boat is shifting you're like is this thing gonna break underneath me what is that glowing thing in the water that i just saw was that something mystical that i should go after and it's safe or is that some sort of giant sea creature that's gonna eat my entire boat you never know you never know except you do after you encounter it the first time and then you're like oh yeah stay away from sea serpents because they can really f you big time but it's really just a wild experience. You'll, you'll run into these moments all the time where just things blow your mind like, oh, they already added this thing or like they've already created this setting or biome or something. And maybe it's not entirely complete and you could see how it could add more things, but the game has random events for crying out loud. Like even if you were to build a castle, like I was saying, you still get like attacked by <laughs> like trolls that spawn out of nowhere. It could literally, bash the, the walls of your castle down and it, it just seems like something that's so down the road something they'd add in. Like think about Minecraft, they didn't add villages into the game until 26 years after the game was made. This is the first update and they've already done so much right and so much that's just so smooth and the user interface is minimal and the, the beauty of the world, the fact that it runs 120 frames, the, it's just, it's the coolest thing to see in the gaming world is such a successful launch. You can take a look at the Steam Store's review page of it. It's got like a 96% overwhelmingly positive review so far. You don't think this is possible to be made by such small teams, but it's something that's like actually doable nowadays. Games like Minecraft can be made by small teams of people now because the technology's there. I know in my last video I talked about Risk of Rain being made by three guys and they've sold millions of copies of Risk of Rain 2, and I hope you're inspired by that and not discouraged. Uh, because this game might also make you feel like a piece of shit. <laughs> when I tell you that Valheim, they've made this entire world that seems almost near endless in adventure and opportunity. It's made by five people. Uh, and on Zoom. <laughs> 
because it's a pandemic right now. <laughs> I think Valheim, in the end, is just another stepping stone in the right direction where games are heading. And especially with the smallness of this team and the capabilities of the Unity engine, and, you know, stuff I've praised before about the, how individuals are starting to be able to make full-fledged games just on their own, and I think that's so awesome. I mean, in 2021, Valheim can come out and can produce similar emotions and feelings that I had, similar to when I played Ocarina of Time for the first time on the Nintendo 64. These worlds that like just completely captivated me, and I hate to use this term, but extremely immersive worlds. It's not that, it's, it's not even immersive. I know I'm playing a video game when I'm playing Valheim, but man, you know what I love? The feeling of, I know that I'm going to have an adventure, and especially with Valheim, I know I'm going to have a different adventure than anybody that plays the game, because it's procedurally generated, just the way that Minecraft was. But it also has deep enough lore. It's grounded to an actual story, where you feel like you are invested into the world, and it's it's your duty as a Viking to go hunt down these evil demons that, that Odin has tasked you with killing. And you also have the cooperation and admiration of your friends friends that get to play the game with you and you get to all go on these adventures together where you are risking your biscuits and you're risking, I mean sometimes literally with, with the amount of food that you bring on an adventure, but you can go on these hour long adventures together with your friends into the late nights and lose track of time and just enthrall yourself in this beautiful, scary, daunting, mysterious world that Valheim has Created. Love it so much, and it's it's maybe the best new game I've played in five years, I would say. I cannot recommend this game more, and I'm so excited to see what Valheim adds into the game. I hope you guys go play it and have as much fun as I am. I love talking about games like this. Uh, subscribe if you uh, like the video, like it if you also like the video. That seriously really does help, and I'll see you guys uh, next week. Thanks. Bye.